Have you ever worked hard for something, saved money for it, and when you finally caught it, the joy of having it faded away slowly, sometimes very quickly? One of the most common reason is that you saw someone with a better version of that product you just purchased, a better car, a better house, a better laptop, a better camera, a better pair of shoes. After seeing that person with that item, you compared it with yours and realized that yours is cheap, outdated and backward. It's gone. You don't want to see it anymore. Yet this is the same thing you worked hard for a short while ago. Now you don't care about it. Most likely, you will save again, work even harder to get that better version that you just saw someone walking with. The cycle continues again and again, again and again. Has that ever happened to you? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Muzaffar Teja. Everything and anything is a fair game for me when it comes to making videos. Please watch this one till the end if you want to know more about what I have to say. If you are new, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon because that's how you will be notified when a new video goes live. The process of constantly comparing our own behavior, relationships, jobs, houses, clothes, looks and lives to each other is one of the most damaging internal narrative we can have. It can make us miserable as we assess our own situation in comparison to the world of others. Nowadays, social media plays a crucial role in promoting this damaging behavior. Posting a picture with glowing fair skin, posting a picture of flashy sports car, posting a picture from an exotic uh, holiday location is all common. On the other hand, the viewers of those pictures who are probably the friends or family of the person do not take them as they were intended. At the same time, when one should admire what their friends have and enjoy, the feeling of missing out on the stuff, feeling of deprivation and feeling of not being able to have and enjoy what their friends have kicks in and it ruins the happiness of what you already have and you can enjoy. They begin to compare what they see in those pictures with the, what they have in reality. As a result, they start missing out on the good stuff what is advertised in those pictures. Theodore Roosevelt, 26th President of United States of America said, Comparison is the thief of joy. It provides us with a yardstick of determining what we consider desirable in our lives, which literally steals satisfaction from our lives. Pandemic has taught us many things. One of them which is very important is that it taught us we can perform our jobs while being at home. And if you can remember, uh, during pandemic, when we were working from home, during our video meetings with uh, our colleagues, we used to show the best background available in our house. We used to wear the best blazer while wearing the same pyjama bottom uh, we had on the night before. What I'm trying to say is that when we are in our comfort zone and we are required to switch on uh, camera we only choose to show on camera the best part of our lives best background best blazer best tie but we hide away the dirty desk we hide the mess on the carpet behind us in the same way when people post the nicest picture online the pictures of the best holiday anybody can ever desire or the pictures of mclaren f1 it means that this is the best part of their life or the desirable part of their lives Everybody has problems and ugly patches in their lives, but nobody is showing them off and nobody wants to show them off. When we compare ourselves to what others have or simply how they are, we are essentially making ourselves feel down, right inadequate and deflated, with a low self-esteem to match. With social media being a platform to display every aspect of our lives, high expectations to be earning a certain amount, to own latest tech and uh, look in a certain way. It's only inevitable that as human we are going to give in to the trap that is self-comparison. Now that we know what the problem is, we must look for a solution. There can be multiple things we can practice to avoid depressive behavior. Be grateful for what you have. First of all, I would suggest being grateful to the Almighty Allah for the good things you have in your life. This is impossible and very hard for me to believe that you cannot find some good things 
habits, skills, relatives uh, in your life which you can be grateful for. When you become aware of these great things you have, you will feel instantly uplifted. Ask yourself what makes you different. It can go uh, a lot deeper than the way you look. It can also be the fact that you can have amazing family and friends, a job that serves you and a talent that really makes you special. Being grateful is connected to being patient. If you are not grateful for what you have, then it's difficult for you to be patient for what you do not have. When you have developed this skill set and you see someone wearing better clothes, driving better car, working on a better laptop and what not and what not, you still can have the desire to have those things but your desire will be productive and positive. You will admire those who already have them and you will start thinking of a way for you to have them too. Even though you don't have them at the moment but it will not make you feel miserable for yourself. Recognize when you are most susceptible to comparison. Secondly, you need to find out what are those situations and circumstances when you are most vulnerable to do self-comparison. It might be that, for example, if you uh, do not see yourself as flexible, as strong, you will not compare yourself with the disdain when you see a gymnast. You will most likely see that the pattern of comparison is most distressing when it closely reflects something that you value or something that you think others value. Note down those values so you can see it in black and white and assess whether you think they are true or not or if you feel they are useful or not. Do they serve you to lead the best life you could or do they keep you feeling hopeless and disconnected? When you have done an analysis, you will be able to make a decision yourself whether you want to keep comparing those attributes from your life with others. If you decide those values matter to you, then you will be able to pursue them in a constructive and positive way. If you decide those values don't matter to you or should not matter to you, then you should be able to walk away and ignore them at once. At number three, I would say consider other perspective as well. When we evaluate the truth in our comparison, remember we are seeing only one perspective. Think of it uh, like camera on a laptop for a virtual meeting. It only shows the background you choose it to show. You don't point the camera at the messy desk or messy floor. You don't show people the dirty sink or the mismatched socks. We only see one perspective when we look at others' life. We never really know the whole picture. Don't make the mistake of oversimplifying other people's lives by relying on limited viewpoint as their experiences and challenges are equally complex to your own. While some people may seem happy and successful based on outward appearances, it is important to recognize that this isn't always an accurate reflection of their inner lives. As demonstrated by examples like uh, Robin Williams, things are not always as they seem. Robin Williams was a very successful comedian and Hollywood movie actor, but he was struggling with mental health conditions and eventually ended his own life. At number four, now I'm thinking I should have put this on number one, uh, because in my opinion, this is the most important thing which pushes us towards a depressing self-comparison attitude, social media. Regardless of uh, whether you agree with this statement or not, it's hard to deny that we tend to use our phones frequently, often for layerly activities such as uh, browsing on social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, rather than engaging in more productive endeavors. Next time you feel those self-comparison thoughts creep in, get outside, take a walk. The fresh air, the beautiful surrounding and the endorphins you will get from moving your body and connecting with the nature is the ultimate way to kick away any negative feelings. Finally, I would say you should not be comparing yourself with anybody to begin with. Uh, there is nobody in this whole wide world who can be a replica of yourself. You are unique. There is no one who looks like you, think like you, talk like you, walk like you. If there is nobody like you, then what's the point of comparison? You compare apples with apples, oranges with oranges, but you never compare apples with oranges doesn't make sense right if you want to compare you should only compare yourself with yourself 
This might sound a little contradictory, but hear me out. Think about it. If we only compare ourselves to ourselves, then we are not only benefiting our own lives, but also helping others along the way. Double bonus. How? I'm glad you asked. For example, you can constantly aim to take care of yourself better on a physical and mental level. You can set yourself the goal to be more mindful, to be more prepared with the meals or go to gym for 30 minutes every day. These are all the things that challenge you but benefit you at the same time. Sounds achievable, right? Along with this, you could also strive to be a better person perhaps by helping others more or by making someone smile who is having a bad day. By helping others and reflecting on how to improve our lives, we are already on a path to a happier, healthier life. Thank you very much for putting up with me today. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you agree, if you disagree, or if you totally hate it and you think I have wasted a few precious minutes of your life. Please like, share, and comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot.